Okay, so you've, you've touched on this a little bit, but at your new university, um, what are some of the experiences you've had in the classroom or outside that you did not have at Middlesex? Because we, we kind of like to learn, you know, things that we might be able to add here. Also, once again. <laughs> <laughs> and so I kind of already touched on some of these, uh, the kind of online hub for the student organizations and what. <coughs> so that's something that when I first transferred in, having transferred into the spring, I keep mentioning that because it's, it's off cycle and there's not a lot at least at, at Clark, there wasn't as much support, obviously, as those transferring in the fall, just because that's kind of more standard and or more students are doing so. And so they, they encourage you to look at the online kind of system that they set up specifically so that, you know, students like me who come in partway through the year can learn about what's going on and such. And so that's something new that I encountered that I didn't think that I would encounter and that I thought that it was probably one of the best things because mm -hmm. I love being a part of clubs there. Uh, the second thing is kind of the relationship with faculty that I kind of I kind of mentioned, and so not to say that I didn't have a good relationship with faculty here. You know, I, I definitely liked my professors, and I got to know you know a, a few people in positions. To leave it vague, uh, but there, <coughs> I think it's a lot more transparent, and I, I don't know specifically how. You know, they have open office hours. You can just kind of stop by and just speak with some of the deans. Uh, I volunteered at so many events that have included, you know, many, many dean or president personnel. And so I personally have gotten to know a lot more of the faculty body at Clark simply because I don't know, again, if it's different involvement, but at least I think partly the transparency of just being able to go and speak to them during the open office hours or during these kind of networking events, for example. Um, I would say independence in doing things for yourself in, in terms of classwork or um, getting yourself known around the university or in your um, in your school like there's different different majors and then there's different concentrations of those majors so like there's music school but I'm a concentration in music education um, really I visited them every chance I could um, but I, w I would say independence in terms of getting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. So that you, you've done that much more at UNF. Absolutely. There, at Middlesex, it was more like what had Robert had said of the general education classes, and that's where I did all of my general ed classes was at Middlesex. That way, when I got to UMass, all I had to do was focus on my music courses. So, but it w it's a lot more independent reliance on um, in UMass. May I repeat the question, please? Sure. So at UMass Lowell right now, what kinds of experiences are you having either in the classroom or outside that you did not have at Middlesex? So. I think one of the biggest experiences would definitely be the interaction between uh, professors and the students. Because, you know, here at Middlesex, you know, I'm transferring, so a lot of professors either know or they don't know, and then the advisors know that you're transferring and stuff. So they're going to put a lot of intention, you know, seeing, seeing to that you work hard and making sure that you get to where you want to go. At UMass, when you get there, you know, if you're planning to stay, the professors, you know, they have all these different methods of, you know, doing the classwork and everything, you know, the grading policies and stuff like that. And so the experience that I had was um, in the classroom that you have to play, you have to play as the puppet almost, like a crucial role in UMass to understand how the professor wants the class done. Because here at Middlesex, you know, I had this one professor for a history course and then a biology course. I can almost correlate the two classes together with grading policies. At UMass, you know, I have the anthropology class and then a psych course, two different grading policies, and, you know, I couldn't correlate them. And yet, they're around the same subfield. And, you know, I had to understand what my professor in this class wants and what my professor wants in that class and stuff like that. Outside, I not so much because I don't attend a lot of the organizations or club. It, granted, it probably would help me a lot more, but I spend, I want to focus a lot more on my coursework and you know my essays and, and exams and stuff like that. So I don't put a lot of attention outside of my uh, school life mm -hmm. because I feel like you know if I focus on that, work hard, I can play later. You know that old saying. So. But I think the professor's understanding, you know, the syllabus, especially the syllabus, is very crucial. I had this one professor for my cognitive psych course. She had this grazing policy, you know, where you have these, these classroom assignments, 
you know, if you do them, they're pretty easy. You get, you know, the points that you can get. At the end of the semester, she takes the lowest one off. I got all of them correct. Automatically takes one off. So I intentionally lost points for doing all my classwork. Oh. Yeah, I lost points. So instead of getting an A in that class, I got a B plus, literally an 89. <laughs> so I was kind of a little upset by that, So which made my GPA for this semester, for last semester, 3.4 instead of a 3.5. So, you know, paying attention to what specifically the professor says, you know, sending out emails to understand if you're confused about something, you have to know what they want because if you don't know, it's like a shot in the dark and you can possibly fail a class without even knowing if you don't pay attention to what the professor wants. So I think there's a difference in the experiences there. Um, it's, it's hard for me to ask this question. I, you know, some of the challenges, like I said, with study skills, um, uh, you know, things like that. Um, but I, I really don't think that middle school should change anything having to do with, um, you know, professor interaction or anything like that. Um, I had great relationships with my professors. Um, and although they may be a little colder and distant at, at you know, the four-year institutions because they have so many kids, you know, um, I, I really enjoyed that at Middlesex. I think it's what made my experience, um, you know, what it was. Um, and so it's hard for me to answer that question. I've only, you know, I've only been there for one semester. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'd say organization is, has a lot to do with it, but um, I can't really pinpoint anything should really change inside the classroom to help me with mm -hmm. things like that. And have that. you gotten involved outside of your coursework, or did you not have time with your No, uh, I, um, I, I did service learning in Middlesex. It's uh, something I really liked. And so I started volunteering uh, at an elementary school. And so I still do that, and I work, and I go to Tufts full time. So I have no time to do anything else. <laughs> and, um, which, uh, you know, of course they don't like. Uh, most of the kids there, they live there. So um, that's a challenge, too. Um, at a school like that, it's not a commuter school. You know, they give you a workload expecting that you're going to walk 30 feet to your dorm room and start working on it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm commuting two hours a day, basically, mm -hmm. depending on traffic, right, to Medford. So, um, yeah, so. Um, I had a slight different experience with faculty and staff. Um, interaction um, here at MCC it's it's very natural you you know you have 30 people in the class and you you, you can't help but get to know your professor um, at BU um, it's a big school you have 200 people in the lecture hall you're kind of starstruck because your professor might have won a Nobel Prize or a Pulitzer and you're kind of like oh my god he's a celebrity um, and so like with the whole office hour thing I said you kind of have to really push yourself to go you ha it's a separate class for me. It was an extra hour a week to go to office hours and talk to my people. And then you get there and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to say? I don't have a question, but I, you know, I need help. You know, I'll go for help, but I also want a letter of recommendation. Do I just go and say hi? Or, hey, my name is Haisa. How are you? It's hard. Um, and something else that I was, um, I think something that I, I did not experience here at MCC, but I know other community colleges have a stronger grasp of this a little bit is the idea of internships and that whole volunteer thing I talked about. Um, like I said, I did not know the importance of volunteering when you're going into a medical field. I, d I had no idea what an internship was. I had heard of an internship. I didn't know the details. And I have friends who've um, gone to like Bunker Hill Community College who were like, no, I've been doing internships since my first year. And I was like, what? So I feel like I, I wish I had known a little bit more about it because there are tons of opportunities here in Lowell. Uh, Lower General Hospital, uh, and any, and any, I'm saying in the science field because that's what I go into. But um, and so things outside the classroom, I'm usually really involved, and I feel like it's so important. Um, and so that, those were my experiences.